How do? Andrew here. Last week, I finally bought a Nintendo Switch. I didn't buy a video game, but I did buy the console, because Super Mario Odyssey comes out at the end of the month, and I must play it. So I brought my new toy home, set it on my table, and thought, you know what? I actually like to get my hands on that Joy-Con controller because I've never seen any uh, Switch demo units in stores anywhere. Didn't go to E3 or any of the other trade shows this year, so uh, I'd never held one before. So I dug into the box, turning on my camera to film this momentous occasion, uh, grabbed the Joy-Cons, well, Joy-Con Joy singular, but you know, both pieces, and didn't like them. Like, at all. Made a video about it, you might have seen it. Um, yeah, uh, I concluded that the Joy-Con is far and away the single worst controller I have ever wrapped my meaty little paws around, and called it some unflattering names. You might have seen that in the title of my last video. But uh, some uh, of my viewers recommended that I withhold judgment until I've actually used the Joy-Con uh, for its intended purpose, playing games. Which I didn't do in the original video, obviously, because I had just taken this thing out of the box, wasn't hooked up yet, didn't have, <laughs> I didn't have any games. Uh, just a first impression of uh, what the controller felt like in my hand. But... That was last week. This is this week. I have since played games. Oh yes, I have. Pl I've played demos of games. About um, about seven hours worth. Uh, so I, I've uh, put in a, a decent amount of time uh, using the Joy-Con in uh, various different configurations to play uh, several different types of games, and um, I. Some of you seem to be interested uh, to see if my opinion has uh, changed, and if so, uh, how much. And I will say that uh, my opinion has changed after actually playing games with the controller. I can uh, pretty positively state that it is worse than I thought it was going to be in some respects. And uh, in other respects, merely as bad as I thought it would be. Um... There's really no, yeah, there, I can't think of anything about the controller that's actually better than I initially thought it would be. This is a bad controller, and Nintendo should feel bad. So, uh, let's talk about what I played and what I think of the Joy-Con in uh, its various configurations. So, the first demo I played was a game that I'm still not completely certain how to pronounce. It's called, I think, VOICE. Uh, it's spelled V-O-E-Z in all caps. It's a, uh, it's a rhythm game. It's kind of like a Guitar Hero, Hero or Rhythm Heaven. Basically, uh, notes fall down a music highway and you have to tap them using the touch screen on the, once they hit a line at the bottom of the screen. So, this particular game is, you can't play it on the TV, you have to play it on the touch screen. So, um, there's a couple different ways you can do that. Uh, unfortunately, and, and yeah, you could probably say, oh, of course, Andrew, Andrew chose for his first game the one game that doesn't actually use the Joy-Con controller. Oh, ho, ho. that wasn't actually on purpose. I wasn't like, all right, fine, let's play the game that I don't have to hold this ridiculous thing. No, I, I just really wanted to play this game because it looks cool. And it is cool. I actually like the game. By the way... I'm going to be talking primarily about the Joy-Con itself. I'm not actually going to be really reviewing the games that I played. If you're curious as to what I thought of, about the various games I played, let me know in the comments and maybe I can make another video uh, talking about what I thought of the uh, actual content rather than how it controlled. Um, so, the, the problem I have with voice is there's really no ideal way to hold the Switch to play the game. Um, due to the way the game works, you kind of, unless you're playing it on the easiest difficulty, you have to use both hands because there will be 
a bunch of notes scrolling down this side of the screen and a bunch of notes scrolling down this side of the screen and I, I guess maybe if you're really good you could independently do it like that but most of us are gonna play like that um, if you're holding it with the Joy-Con on the side y you unless you have giant hands it's gonna be really hard to reach the middle you'd constantly be shifting your hands and this isn't really comfortable. So, uh, playing with the Joy-Con on the side is not what you want to do. Now, you might think also you can do the little kickstand thing. Um, and your first thought is, well, the kickstand's not going to work because as soon as you poke it on this side, it's just going to topple over. Actually, not really, uh, because where you touch is on the bottom of the screen. The problem comes is you, you start scooting the little sucker across the table, which is, you know, you've got enough problems with moving targets on the screen. You don't need the actual screen moving, too. So that's no good. So your choices are either hold it, without, hold it in your hands without the Joy-Con, and if you have larger hands like me, you can actually reach, reach the center. Um, or you can lay it flat on a, a table or other surface and play it like that. Both methods have a drawback, though. When you're holding it, number one, this, this holding the sides of these is not particularly comfortable. I mean, it doesn't hurt, it doesn't pinch, you're not going to bleed or anything, but it, it's not really comfortable to hold like this. Um, also, the, the separate note tracks can actually squish to one side of the screen, so if you were playing like this, you might end up having to do one of these. Uh, when you're holding it, you might have to really re readjust one of your hands to reach one side or the other. Um, the problem with it uh, flat on a table is kind of the same problem you have in kickstand mode. One, well, it's not angled at you. It's unless you're <laughs> you know leaning over it, it's not angled at you. Uh, plus, uh, some of the move there aren't just taps. There are swipes and moves, you know, things like that, so you'll end up scooting the tablet or the switch across the table a bit when you get really frantic and see it starts to move. So, at least for this particular game, which is touchscreen only, there's no ideal way to play the game. Uh, every setup has its drawbacks, which, which is a shame. Um... It's not really a function of the Switch, perhaps, more of a function of the way this game controls. Yeah, you know, actually, if, if you use a surface with a high enough frictional coefficient, like shag carpeting, uh, put it put it flat on shag, or, you know, actually glue a Velcro and, you know, Velcro it down. Then it's probably fine, but uh, uh, I, I like the game. There's there's just really no ideal way to play it, and, and, and that's unfortunate. Uh, so, uh, next I tried uh, some games using the Joy-Con in the, uh, the horizontal method, yeah, like this. I played uh, Snipper Clips and Puyo Puyo Tetris. Um, playing any game, uh, at least in my experience, my about an hour's worth of experience playing uh, Snipper Clips and Puyo Puyo Tetris, uh, with the joy, with a single half of the Joy-Con held in horizontal mode is an utterly miserable experience. This is seriously uncomfortable. Again, not in, not in a painful manner. Again, you're not going to end up bleeding, but oh, this is so awful. This this, this just feels bad. Uh, I mean, look at the way I'm holding this. You you see the way my fingers are kind of curled in so that I can press straight down on these buttons. They're hard to press because they're inset, which they have to be so that they can slide onto the side of the switch or the grip. But that makes them hard to press. Most, most console controllers or even uh, handhelds have buttons on the side that you just you know tap like this. You don't have to crook your hands and aim inward. Um, also, uh, a, a function of just how these are laid out... You want the control stick on one side and the buttons on the other side. You want the buttons here. 
Likewise, on the other one, you would want the control stick over here. Of course, if they did that, that would mean that the you'd have to reach all the way down here for buttons, and on this one, you'd have to reach all the way down here for a controller stick. So, with this particular design, uh, lesser of two evils, and uh, Nintendo picked the lesser, so they, you know... Personally, I would have gone with a controller with no evils, but, you know, if you have two evils, you may as well pick the lesser one, right? So, um, this is, is cramped, it's uncomfortable, the buttons are not easy to push, you're constantly bumping uh, the shoulder buttons, usually because you have to kind of squeeze in to, to, to get these uh, shoulder buttons. Uh, it's, it, is not an, it is not at all a pleasant way to play a game. Um, if the Switch controller was just this, like, if this was all the controller was and you played every game like this, I, I think I almost certainly would have just said, okay, I'm, I'm going to have to skip out on this generation. I don't like the controller, but I'm going to use that darn thing for the next four or five years until Nintendo comes out with something new because I'm not denying myself Super Mario Odyssey and other greatness that's coming from the company over the next few years and others, uh, other companies. Um... But, you know, as much as I'm looking forward to uh, Mario Odyssey, it ain't worth playing it like this. And I don't think you can play Mario Odyssey with this thing. But uh, words fail to communicate exactly how awful this is. Now, now I think most people would play this just as a form of convenience. I, I can't think of really any game that... Uh, requires this that isn't a, a multiplayer game of some sort. And even most... Snipperclips, I think, might be... Snipperclips and probably 1-2 Switch are some of the only games that really require you to play a game like this in the horizontal mode. Um, and I don't play multiplayer games, so this is almost certainly never going to be a problem for me. Thank goodness. Um, but, wow. Uh, even if I liked games like... Uh, Mario Kart or, or what, whatever, and someone said, hey, hey, let's, you know, un get these things. Here, here, here. Let's play some Super Mario Kart. I'd be like, you know what? Um, no. Don't you like Mario Kart? You want to play me Mario Kart? I'd love to, but this is so unfun. I just, just no. Sorry, but no. Um, so I also tried it with the rail. Um, which way does this go? It goes this way. And this helps... Uh, it gives you a little bit more to hold on to. These feels... Th these, uh... These buttons that are on a little spring that press down into the buttons underneath. I feel I have a fairly decent command of the English language, but I genuinely do not have the vocabulary to accurately describe how awful these feel to press. The... It's weird. It's like, oh, pressing this button just feels gross. And I don't know how to communicate it um, more accurately than that. But these just feel bad to press. Um, and also you're, you're crunched up on one side of the controller or the other. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. Playing a rail or not, playing with these horizontals, horizontal is... Uh, that, that's a, that's a no-go for me, and if that was the only way to play games, I'm a Nintendo fanboy, but I would sit out a generation if this were my only option. Um, I also did play uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris with the, uh, uh, the Joy-Con on the side of the machine, and it's fine. Um, it, it's really no... it's... hmm... The, well, one of the problems is the same problems I have with handhelds, in that you have to hold the screen still. I mean, I... I you can't lay it... Fl I guess you could do this, but... This doesn't really feel great to hold. It's long, it's flat, it just... The controller feels bad. It, it's not my preferred way to play a game. I, I don't like holding the screen. I don't like that. that. That's a personal thing. So this is not my preferred method to play a game. Also, why would I play it here when I could play it on my TV? Uh, well, because I'm in an airport, maybe. Um, 
I, it's kind of the... Oh, I just spit on my Switch. It's kind of the make-do <laughs> thing. If you're sitting in a chair in the middle of an airport lounge, you probably don't want to, uh, you know, kickstand your... Come on, you little bugger. Oh, my God. Uh, kickstand your Switch, uh, put it on the floor, and then use this. Someone to step on it. You know, you don't want to do that. So... It, it's nice that the option is there for convenience if, if you travel a lot, but certainly not my preferred way to play a game. It just doesn't feel good um, on top of these being genuinely awful controllers. Uh, so anyway, I also played uh, Blaster Master Zero, uh, Disky 5, and Project Octopath Traveler. Uh, put in an hour each on Blaster Master and Disky 5, and about three hours on uh, Project Octopath Traveler. And those... I played um, kind of half and half, half with the controllers by themselves and half of them uh, in the uh, in the grip. So um, let's start with by themselves. These don't feel good. As I said in the video, they're not uncomfortable. They're just not comfortable. They're not pleasant to hold. They don't feel right. The sticks feel wrong. The buttons feel wrong. The triggers feel wrong. Everything just doesn't feel good on this con controller. Um, what I didn't know until I actually spent some time playing like this, one of the things I like is you can you know, play like this or like this because they're not connected. They don't have a tether like the remote and nunchuck did on the Wii. In Play like this, play like this, you play wherever you lay sideways on your couch, upside down, and flail all over the place. I like that in concept, but these controllers, after some time, for me anyway, are not comfortable to hold. Um, it, it's weird because, I guess it's because there's just nothing to grab onto. You're mostly holding them up between uh, your thumb and uh, first two fingers. So this is where most of the pressure goes, even when you wrap your hands up around it. There's, what, you can see that it doesn't actually rest in my hand. When you have a regular controller, the weight distributes among the rest of your hands. It's not like these are heavy or anything, but after an hour, these are just... I start feeling it in my wrist and forearm. Again, not painful or anything. It's not like, ah, oh, carpo tunnel! No, it's just not comfortable. It's not a comfortable way to play. It, I really don't like these. Um, I actually tried... I tried... And failed. Uh, <laughs> I actually tried these hands-off with the rails just to see if the extra bulk would would help. It doesn't for me. Um, because it just adds bulk on the side and makes, makes it just a bit more awkward to hold. So I was hoping that maybe just the extra surface area, the extra volume would just give me more to hold on to and make it feel better. It uh, unfortunately just makes it even more awkward. Um, there it is. So, um, yeah, I hope there aren't any games that really require me to independently move these, uh, because I really don't want to play games unless they're in the grip. So, let's talk about in the grip. So, the grip makes, them, makes this a lot more comfortable to hold. Uh, in fact... I never really got, I never got tired, I never got uh, sore, and lightly tired, lightly sore, I mean, again, not that I was in pain or anything. Uh, this is fine, this, this feels okay. Uh, the problem then becomes just the controller itself and how the buttons and sticks and triggers feel, which, to me, feel terrible. Um... One one problem is and is is this is how I naturally rest on the controller. You see where my index fingers are. I normally you would press shoulder buttons 
with with the pad of your forefingers like that but the way my hands fit on this controller I'm having to hit it with the with like the inside of the pad past the first knuckle you know so I have to go like that to, to hit the buttons just because these are so close together um I can still play games like this. I mean, I, I played seven hours worth of games. I played Project Octopath Traveler for three hours. About an hour and a half with these out of the grip and another 90 minutes with them in the grip. And... Ah, man, I don't like it. I'm going to put up with it for the next several years because, uh, yeah, again, Mario and Octopath Traveler, lots and lots of fun, but... Oh, this is just not a good controller. Everything feels... Uh, luckily, the grip the grip makes it comfortable enough to hold, I think. But the sticks and the triggers and the buttons are such bunk that... Oh, man, does that just uh, take some of the wind out of my sails, you know? Um... One thing I have not done yet that, that I uh, still would like to analyze is play a game uh, like, like uh, Super Mario Odyssey that moves a character around in a three-dimensional space while simultaneously uh, manipulating the camera. Um, one thing I noticed in both uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris, uh, Disgaea 5, Project Octopath Traveler, uh, all games where you're either moving a cursor along a menu, oh, also uh, uh, Blaster Master Zero, you're either moving a menu, uh, a cursor in a menu, or you're moving a character in a 2D space. Usually uh, either four directions or eight directions, up, down, left, right, and sometimes the uh, diagonal directions. Normally when I'm just doing a menu-driven game like an RPG and the character moves on a grid or only moves up, down, left, right, sometimes the diagonals, I would want to use the directional pad rather than the control stick. Unfortunately, the directional pad is in right on... In every other uh, controller, the directional pad would be here. But it's right because these are detachable. It has to be right directly underneath, which means you kind of have to move your thumb like that, which is not comfortable at all. Uh, either that, or slide your hand all the way down, so you're holding it down here, which is also really awkward. And it's kind of the same thing if you're, if you're holding it by itself. You have to either choke down like this, which feels really, really bad. I mean, look how pinched my hand is. Or do this, which is just... You want the buttons under the pad of your thumb, not the front part, <laughs> you know, where you're hitting the top button with your fingernail. Um, I actually ended up, it puts my thumb at such an odd angle that I ended up hitting the down button, the button on the bottom when I thought I was hitting the right direction. So I'd be like, ah, let's move our character to the right, but let's use the D-pad. And, you know, I bend my thumb down, but this weird angle kind of makes this feel like up and this feel like... You understand what I'm talking about? The, the the angle of your thumb is so awkward that you think that you end up using the controller, the D-pad, like it's rotated 90 degrees. Um, because it's right under the stick. Um, again, with this type of setup, there's really no other place they could have put it, except further down, which would be even worse. But that still doesn't change the fact that that is not a good position. And I imagine that the same problem is going to uh, emerge when I play something that requires me to use the buttons, but also jump on the stick down here for camera control. Uh, because you would naturally want the stick right here, where your thumb goes, not here. Or, down, or you're constantly switching grips like this. What I will... Pr I was playing with it a little bit, trying to kind of in my mind's eye, I play Mario, and I think what I will probably end up doing is controlling the stick with, like, the inside of my thumb under the first knuckle, which feels really wrong to do that, but usually it's just slight movements to a camera. You're usually not doing too much with the stick, so it's pro not ideal, not cool, but probably workable enough. Um... 
what else do I want to say here? Oh, um, one problem actually ends up being an advantage, but only an advantage insofar as it <laughs> is creating its own problem. Let, let, let me see if I can uh, um, communicate that more elegantly. Um, as I said, when I'm playing an RPG, uh, it was something where I'm moving a cursor along a menu or moving a, two, a character along a 2D plane, I would normally want to use a D-pad, right? Well, the D-pad's out of reach, so I'm going to be stuck with the analog stick. On the bright side, because the analog stick is small and it doesn't have as much uh, room to move, it feels a lot closer to a D-pad than a regulation size uh, analog stick would. So, uh, moving cursors around menus or characters on a 2D plane isn't as awkward with this control stick as it would be with uh, standard size control sticks. On the other hand, I'm concerned that the, the smaller control stick is going to make movement a bit more imprecise in uh, games where you control a character in a 3D space like Mario. Maybe it's not going to be a problem. Maybe I never needed that much accuracy in the first place. We shall see. Uh, if you like, I'll uh, once I get Mario or some other game where I'm controlling a 3D character while simultaneously moving the camera, I'll do another video and let you know what I think. Um, but, uh, I, th I think that is it. This is, bar none, the absolute worst video game controller I have ever had the displeasure of wrapping my fists around. Um, I don't use third-party controllers. I'm sure there are plenty of controllers that are much worse than this. Um, but as far as all of the first-party, uh, Nintendo controller go, go, Nintendo controllers go for their, uh, uh, handhelds and their uh, consoles, um, Sony's controllers, uh, the Dreamcast controller, and Microsoft's controllers, except the Xbox One controller, which I don't believe I've ever actually held because I don't care. Um, I should probably go grab it. In a, maybe I did grab it in a store once and I forgot about it because I just don't care about the Xbox One. So, um, Nintendo, I am Thank you.